Hey there kids, I'm Jonathan Strickland and this is the brain stuff about that most powerful of liquors, absinthe. So in 1905, a Swiss vineyard worker named Jean Lenfray shot his pregnant wife and his two daughters. Then he tried to kill himself, unsuccessfully. The public were absolutely outraged and blamed the whole thing on two glasses of absinthe Lanfray had consumed before his rampage. Absinthe is an anise-flavored alcoholic drink, and for a while there it was banned in the United States, Switzerland, and France. The traditional recipe from before the ban has a really high alcohol content, anywhere from 55 to 75 percent, so you're supposed to dilute it when you drink it, unless you've already started the day drinking paint thinner. Absinthe made from anise, fennel, a plant called wormwood, and a variety of other herbs and flowers. This recipe was first commercially produced in 1797 by Henri Louis Pernod, and a century later it was incredibly popular because a vine pest made wine less available. Simultaneously, an anti-alcohol movement was growing, called for by doctors, the clergy, and the wine growers who wanted their industry back. The growers started a misinformation campaign linking absinthe to hallucinations, seizures, suicides, and murders like those committed by Lanfray. They even produced posters denouncing addiction to the drink as absinthism, which I suffered from in junior high. Recent studies show, though, that if there was a real problem, it was actually widespread alcoholism that was to blame. Remember, absinthe has an incredibly high concentration of alcohol in it, and at the time, it was one of the most highly consumed drinks in France, so the two went hand in hand. But the scientists of the time, perhaps misguided by absinthism propaganda, missed this interrelationship. Instead, they performed experiments on animals to prove that wormwood was at fault. But here's the thing. There's a component in wormwood called thujone that, in high doses, can be toxic. Examination of historic absinthe products has determined that they actually had about the same thujone in them as today's maximum limits will allow, meaning they weren't toxic. But did absinthe make people hallucinate? It's unlikely. But if it did, it was probably caused by the ethanol content and not the thujone in the wormwood. Since 2007, modern absinthe can only be sold in the United States if it's thujone free. If it has wormwood in it, the FDA considers it adulterated. But honestly, you could probably get away with bringing a bottle or two into the country in your suitcase. If you're looking to hallucinate with the green fairy, there's no evidence that absinthe, even with high doses of thujone, will get you there. Frankly, you'd probably die from alcohol poisoning well before you felt any effects from the thujone. Oh, and for the record, when Jean Lenfray killed his family, he had a lot more to drink than absinthe. He also had about 13 glasses of wine, six cognacs, two coffees full of brandy, and a creme de menthe. Have you ever drank that much? Or have you ever even had absinthe? Tell us what it was like in our YouTube comments. And if you want any more cool answers to everyday questions, subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'm gonna go get my drink on.